Good evening. It's wonderful to have you with us tonight for our at the table service here at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church on Sunday, October 16th. We are glad that we can come together in this way and be together as a community of faith in this virtual way. And whether you're joining us live or whether you're watching a recording of us, we're glad you're here and know that you're always welcome uh, to what we have going on being a part of our ministry here at Western Boulevard. You can find us on Facebook, on Instagram. You can go to our website, wbpresbyterian.org, and find more information. And, and if you have any questions, just reach out to us. We'd love for you to be a part of our life here in ministry on the west side of Raleigh. Uh, we're going to begin our worship tonight uh, with a call to worship. And let me make sure put the right thing up on the screen here. And if you join me on the response of call to worship, seek good and not evil. Seek the Lord and live. May the Lord our God be with us. Seek good and not evil, that justice may prevail. May the Lord our God show us grace now and always. And do you want to share with us anything about our opening song? Uh, the opening song is a familiar psalm and uh, arranged by Richard Smallwood. It's titled Total Praise. Great, thanks. Thank you, Van. That was wonderful. It really was. Originally tonight, I was going to use a passage from, from Mark for our scripture, uh, but I've 
actually selected a different scripture for today. I'm going to hear these words from the psalmist from Psalm 46. I invite you to hear these words. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. God utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Today, I had a plan originally uh, to share a message with you on stewardship and where, our, where we place our priorities as people of faith. Because we're in the midst of the stewardship season here at Western Boulevard, and I thought I could keep that focus today ahead of our dedication Sunday next week. But as I opened up my computer Saturday morning and read what I had finished writing Thursday afternoon, I realized that wasn't going to work. Too much has happened in our community since Thursday to try to pretend it didn't happen. Too much has happened in our lives since Thursday to pretend we're not impacted by what took place. Our community is hurting right now. It is deeply wounded by the mass shooting that took place on Thursday afternoon and evening on the east side of Raleigh. Five people are dead, two people are injured. A 15 year old boy was the shooter and it has been reported that one of the victims was his 16 year old brother. Except the other, it's another senseless, unnecessary act of gun violence in our country. Except this happened in our city. It's our city that has now made the national headlines, joining a long list that includes Uvalde, Newtown, Las Vegas, Buffalo, and Columbine, just to name a few. Before, we always looked at the national news and said a word of thanks that, oh, that wasn't where we live. Thank you. We can't say that anymore. This tragedy happened to us, and we are in pain. This has been especially hard for me and Debbie because we live in the Headingham neighborhood. We may not have known Gabriel, James, Nicole, Susan, and Mary personally, but they were our neighbors. We probably passed them and said hi to them while we were walking our dog Sorry. or waved to them when we were on the greenway. They were people just like us who were going about their daily everyday lives on a beautiful fall afternoon. And in an instant, their families' lives were forever shattered and changed. It could have easily been us. It could have easily been any of us. I had come home earlier on Thursday afternoon because I had to meet a technician, a service technician here at our house. And after he was gone, I sat out on our back porch and with our dog Lucy on her chain and finished writing the sermon that I was originally going to give today. Our backyard looks out over the first green uh, of the golf course here at Headingham. And other than one golfer who hit his ball in our yard, which often happens, it was a quiet afternoon. 
I went back inside after I was done and I watched one of the playoff baseball games on the television as I waited for, as I waited for Debbie to get home from work. She texted me a little bit after before five o'clock saying that she was leaving the hospital. She got home about 10 minutes after five o'clock. We never heard the gunshots. We live on the opposite side of the neighborhood from where the shooting took place. Our home is on the first street that you come to when you enter the neighborhood off of South Hall Road, which is where Fire Station 21 is located. So it's not uncommon for us to hear the fire engines go out on a call, nor is it uncommon really to see a police car from time to time come down Eagle Trace Drive, which that's the main through street for our neighborhood. But what happened next was unlike anything I have ever seen in my life. About five minutes after Debbie got home, we were in the kitchen fixing dinner and our kitchen window looks out over the first hole and Eagle Trace Drive. And all of a sudden, we heard and saw a couple of police cars speeding down the road and then another three and then another four. And they just kept coming along with fire trucks and EMS. And then there were state police cars and Wake County Sheriff cars. All of them just kept coming, flying down the road to the eastern end of the neighborhood. And Debbie and I looked at each other and we knew this was something bad. Debbie went next door to our neighbor's house and our neighbor had a police scanner, which he monitored. And that's when we found out what was truly going on. Before all the news broke in, we knew that multiple people had been shot in our community. All told, there had to have been at least 60 police cars that entered our neighborhood. And that's probably a low estimate. So in the midst of all of this commotion, there was kind of ironic or weird, was there was this foursome of golfers who pulled up to the green outside our house. And I could tell that they didn't, they were kind of startled and didn't unsure of what was going on. So I went out the back door and I told them, hey, there's an active shooter in our neighborhood. We don't know where he is, but he's not in custody. And they thanked me, turned the golf cart around and went back to the clubhouse. And probably the scariest time for us were those first 90 minutes. Because during that time, they didn't have a clear idea of where the shooter might be, which direction he had gone. We were all told to stay in our homes and lock our doors. And I have never been in a situation like that. Weather events, those are that's one thing. But to be locked in my home because there is a threat by someone in my neighborhood, that was unnerving, to say the least. And I don't remember who said it, but one of us said to each other, how much do you want to bet that this is a troubled teenager with easy access to guns in their house? What was surreal, what was utterly surreal, was to see our street corner on the local and then the national news. The police closed the entrance to the neighborhood at South Hall Road, and that was where all the media set up for their live shots. And where they were standing was where I had just walked Lucy an hour and a half earlier. I just couldn't believe that this was happening. We decided together not to say anything yet to our daughters or to our mothers until things had settled down and there was a resolution to the crisis. What rattled us even more was when Debbie's mother, who lives in Indiana, called around 645 to ask if we were okay. Our local news had preempted the national news, but her mother had seen it on the national news and she recognized our neighborhood. So we immediately called our family to let them know what was going on and to say that we were safe. 
by seven o'clock, it was becoming clear that the search for the shooter was moving to the east, that it was across the Noose River, and it was further away from our location. And that was when we started to relax a little, knowing that the threat was not as close as it had been. We kept getting updates from our neighbor on what he was hearing on the police scanner, and he confirmed what we had initially suspected, that it was a teenager. And we were like all of you. We were glued to our televisions or our smartphones to hear what the latest was on the search and the condition of the victims, all the while staying locked in our home. Many of you reached out to us to see how we were doing. And I want you to know how much that meant to both of us. I also then realized it was probably best to send out an email to the congregation, both in terms of praying for our city and to let you know how this was impacting us because it's where we live. Your messages and your calls these last couple of days have helped us know how much we are cared for by this congregation. Debbie had to be off working with for covering a shift this morning for one of her colleagues at the main hospital in Chapel Hill, but she wanted me to express again how much that meant to both of us. There was a sense of relief when the shooter was taken into custody to be sure, but the other emotion that I had that night was of deep, deep sadness and pain. And I still feel that today, and I know I will for the days to come, as I'm sure we all will. I'm deeply saddened that mothers will not see their children grow up. I'm heartbroken that a father will not be there to witness his little girl grow into a young woman. I'm deeply grieved that instead of holding a wedding in two weeks, a fiance will now hold a funeral for the woman who was to be his partner for life. I'm deeply saddened that a woman who loved and compassionately cared for others will not be there to care for and be loved by her husband and family. And I am deeply saddened for the family of the shooter, for they have lost two sons in one tragic afternoon. As is often the case, we are learning of the personal connections that impact us in these times. Blythe Clifford shared with me that one of the victims was a senior at Athens Drive High School when Blythe was a freshman there. And Debbie learned of another personal connection on Friday. Two of Debbie's colleagues knows the family of the shooter. In fact, one of them taught the two brothers in Sunday school at their church. The pain and the heartbreak in our community is deep and it is wide and it will be impacting us for quite some time. And I am angry that a senseless act of violence has marred the place that I call home. And yet it is the same acts of violence which people in our urban areas across our country live with every day. Why should this act be any different than those? They're not. Lives were ended prematurely because we continue to turn a blind eye to the easy access to guns in our country. We are all victims of gun violence this day. Our spouse or child or aunt or friend, they may not have been killed on Thursday, but we have all been forever affected by the violence someone committed to us with a gun. And if you think this couldn't happen where you live, I am here to say you are wrong. You are wrong. There will be more to say in the coming weeks about all that we have lived through these last few days. But for now, I'm relying on the words of the psalmist, which we heard earlier. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. When it feels like the earth is constantly shaking under our feet, because of God's refuge, 
we are called not to fear. When it feels like the mountains are rocking and the water is foaming all around us, because of God's strength, we are called not to fear. When it feels like all hope is lost, I have to trust that God is in the midst of the city and God will never be moved from our side. I am grateful that when I am at the end of my rope, God is there to reel me back in and reassure me that we are always, always in God's loving embrace. There is much healing and work to do, my friends. Let us not shrink from the call that is set before us. In the face of tragedy and death, may we respond with hope and love, trusting that the Lord of hosts is with us and that the God of Jacob is our strength. Thanks be to God. Amen. In response to God's word, I would invite us again to hear the words of the psalmist, this time from the words of Psalm 121, part of which we heard in the song that Van opened us our worship with. Please join me in this unison declaration of faith. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. So we come to a time when we lift up our prayers, both joys and concerns in our life together. Um, let me share a couple that I'm aware of and invite you to share any that we might lift them up in our prayers as, a, as the people of God. Um, Robert Owens uh, has been in the hospital this past week. Uh, being treated for an infection, a cellulitis infection, but he is hopefully coming home tomorrow. And he is uh, grateful for all of your prayers of support for him and uh, Lynn and during this time. So our prayers continue to be with him as he recovers. I would ask prayers if you would remember one of my good friends in ministry. Her name is Allison Unruh. Allison is a minister, a Presbyterian minister in um, Blacksburg, Virginia. And her husband of four years died this past week at the age of 51 uh, from colon cancer. So if you would, I would appreciate you remembering her in your prayers. And I have a joy to share. Um, tomorrow, we welcome the newest member of our staff. His name is Terrence Rogers. And Terrence will be our new Director of Christian Education and Community Engagement. And we are excited about him joining us and being a part of our team and our ministry at Western Boulevard. Terrence is also a Master's of Divinity student at Duke Divinity School. And we uh, are grateful for his, we're looking forward to him being a part of our, I, I said this morning, he passed the last test last Sunday, which was meeting with the youth. And that all went really well. And he passed with flying colors. So they are excited as well for him to be a, their leader coming up. So look for more information this week. And then he will be joining us uh, in the morning worship service next Sunday. So you all have other prayer concerns that you'd like to lift up that we might share them as the body of Christ. Um, I can report on Helen Holzhauser, a former member of our church. We Thank visited you. with her yesterday. Um, I had gotten a a message that said she was, she got off the ventilator for a weekend, but her pH level, I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, it went down low. So they put her back on the ventilator. And because she's been there so long, they were talking about moving her to a longer term care facility. 
And the one they could find that was available is in Alexandria, Virginia. Oh my goodness. Which would be awful for her family and for her. Yeah. And so and one of the doctors there is trying to work with her pH level and trying to do it. But the only place in North Carolina they could transfer is Greensboro and Greensboro has no, no bed. Yeah. And the insurance company's giving them a hard time. So uh, this is another reason we need universal health care. Yeah. The insurance companies don't need to be determining how we're cared for. Right. But anyway, we went to see her yesterday and she actually had a voice tube in mm. and she talked. Oh, and so uh, we had a great visit. I, she's got better spirit than I would have in her situation. Yeah. Uh, but we're just praying that she can make it and not have to be transferred to Alexandria. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that update, Sandy. We are grateful for that and, and prayers for, for Helen and her family and her care team that they can work out what's best for her long-term health, her health. Thank you. Thank you. So I have prayer of Thanksgiving. The evangelism committee was uh, privileged to provide a meal for a new members class today. Yeah. Had, we had six six individuals as a part of that meal and um, have another another family who couldn't be there who's also expressed an interest in joining the church. So that's wonderful. Yeah, it was a wonderful time together. Thank you, Becky. I'm thankful that uh, Van Anthony's never asked me to sing that high note. Yeah, that was pretty high. I, I noticed that, yeah. I also know he dropped down lower after he was done with that. Did you notice that too? <laughs> Well done. Well done. I thought it was beautiful. It was. It Thank was. You. Praise God. <laughs> well, we'll hold all of these together in our prayers. For our prayer tonight, I'd like to share, and some of you may have already seen this. I appreciated our Presbytery of New Hope sent out um, a pastoral letter and a prayer as well uh, for what happened this week. And I'd like to use that, if you don't mind, for our prayers tonight. So let's turn together uh, in a spirit of prayer. Oh, holy God, you call us to love our neighbor when our neighbors are grieving and our neighborhoods are devastated. Call us to be door opening innkeepers working together for healing and for restoration. You ask us to be salt, O oh God, when our leaders and first responders are fatigued. Give them renewed energy and strength for their work ahead. You expect us to be light, O oh God, when terror comes to our doorstep and nightmares to our community. Help us to reflect your light and to shine it brightly. God of peace, we cry out to you as we grieve the brokenness of our world. We place our trust in you that you will hear our prayers with mercy and with tenderness. Take our fear, our anger, our frustration, and our weary souls embolden us as your disciples to share the love of Jesus Christ in these days ahead. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior. And we conclude by saying the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And any words about our closing song? It's our at the table sending motif. Go in peace and goodwill. Amen. Go in peace.
Yesterday, I attended the you know, the community, the neighborhood association held a prayer vigil in a remembrance time for those of us in the neighborhood, and there were about two hundred of us who came together. Um, and it was they they we used candles similar to what we use on Christmas Eve, a little candle service. And as we held that candle and protected it from the breeze so it wouldn't go out. And I looked at that flame, it reminded me of what we remember and celebrate on Christmas. And that is that the light of God came into the world so that darkness would not overcome it. And I hold on to that. And I hope we all can hold on to that, that the light that God has given us, even in dark times, even in times that feel hopeless, that feel full of pain, that light still shines and it can never be extinguished. And I pray that we might be able to go out and shine that light to a world that desperately needs that hope right now. Friends, may this week be full of grace and love and peace in your life. And may your light shine before others so that all might know the joy of your of God's love. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being here, friends. It's good to be with you. Thank you, Frank. Have Hope you week. all have a good week. Yeah, thank you, Frank. Thank you. Peace be with you. And with you.